Hi. Welcome to the last episode of Operating Budgets. Since we will be consolidating a lot of budgets in this section, I have put up direct material, direct labor, and manufacturing overhead budgets from previous episodes for your convenience. Once we are done with budgets for all the manufacturing costs, we can compile the information to calculate per unit cost for our company. We would need this cal calculation for putting a value on our ending inventory as well as on our cost of goods sold. So, we begin with obtaining the direct material cost per unit from the materials budget. Remember, we spent five pounds on each unit and each pound cost 50 cents. So, per unit direct material cost is $2.50. Next, we go to direct labor budget and take out per unit labor cost of production. It takes us three minutes or 0 0.05 hour or 1 20th of an hour to make one unit and we need $10 to pay for each hour, meaning that our per unit labor cost will be 50 cents. Finally, we get to manufacturing overhead budget and obtain the per unit cost of overheads. We spent a total of $155,000 in our manufacturing overhead budget and we used 3,250 uh, direct labor hours in production. Since direct labor hours is our allocation base, we divide total manufacturing overhead costs of 155,000 by total direct labor hours to get a rate of 47.69 per hour. Since each unit requires only 0 0.05 hour to make, we would multiply and get our per unit manufacturing overhead applied to be 2.385. Combining the three manufacturing costs, we get per unit cost of 5.385, which is a slightly rounded number. So don't worry too much about small differences in total at the end. In the final step, we take the number of units in ending inventory from production budget and calculate total cost of finished goods inventory to be 37730. We need this number in income statement as well as in our projected balance sheet. Since we will be making an income statement soon, it is helpful to make a cost of goods sold statement first to figure out company's expected cost of production. Once again, cost of production or product cost or manufacturing cost, whatever the name may be, is always a total of direct material, direct labor and manufacturing overhead costs. So Murdoch has 2000 units in beginning inventory. This information was given to us when we made production budget. Now we are told that the cost of beginning inventory is $5 a unit. You can either picture the finished goods inventory account from chapter 2 or the cost of goods sold statement where beginning inventory plus cost of goods manufactured minus ending inventory was equal to cost of goods sold. So we would need beginning inventory and ending inventory. We would need their per unit cost and the cost of goods manufactured during the quarter meaning all of the manufacturing costs. Let's look at Murdoch's cost of goods sold statement. Let's start with beginning inventory of 2000 units at $5 a unit. Then we add direct material, direct labor and manufacturing overhead costs to it from the, from the respective budgets. Please remember that we need cost of direct material used and not cost of direct material purchased for this purpose. Also, from manufacturing overhead budget, we need total manufacturing overhead costs, not the cash that we spent on manufacturing overhead costs. Once we have costs of good available, we can subtract ending inventory figure, which we took from ending inventory budget, and we have total cost of goods sold of 322340. Next in the series of estimating expenses, is selling an administrative budget which is also called non-manufacturing expenses budget or operating expenses budget. This budget will complete our compilation of costs at Murdoch. At Murdoch, 
we are given a variable expense of a dollar per unit and a fixed expense of $50,000 a month. Notice an important thing here. The starting point for this budget should be number of units sold and not number of units produced. This is because you pay sales commission on what you sell, not what you make. Do you think you can do it? So here we have a selling and administrative budget for Murdoch. We started with unit sales and multiply by the rate to get to the total variable expenses and then add the fixed portion. The budget is fairly easy with one complication that we have seen before and that is depreciation. Companies incur depreciation expense on the office building but they do not have to pay any cash for it so the cash payment for selling and administrative expenses is reduced by the amount of depreciation. We would need all these numbers in income statement and later in our cash budget. Selling general and administrative budgets are fairly easy to make. Let's look at a couple of easy problems before we go. First portion of this problem is almost trivial and does not really need a full-fledged income statement. We multiply the budgeted sales in units by the per unit rate and add fixed costs to it. The twist is in the question asked because it wants to know the cash to be paid for selling in administrative expenses and does not want to know total manufacturing overhead costs. So we will take out depreciation from total costs to get to cash disbursements. Second problem says that given the cash disbursements for June, can you calculate number of units sold in that month. So we do the same thing as we did in part one, but this time we leave units to be sold as a variable S. We plug in the cash disbursements given in the problem and solve for S to be 9,000 units. That wasn't too bad, was it? 